In this video, I tried beating Terraria using spears only, but here's the twist. I installed a mod that allows my weapons to gain experience for damaging enemies, with each level increases the damage, critical strike chance, size, attack speed, and best of all, additional projectiles. Just how strong will I be able to get my spears to, and will it be enough to take down the final boss Moonlord? Stay tuned to find out. Alright, let's go get my first spear. There are a few options, but the one that I'll be going for is going to be the Rotted Fork. It's fairly easy to get, has decent damage, and generates a shockwave at the end of the spear for extra reach. I could go straight for the Storm Spear since it's able to shoot projectiles, but without a spear to defend myself, I can see myself dying many many times. Once I have the Rotted Fork, then I'll try to get my hands on the Storm Spear. Okay, that should be enough wood for now. Let's try to find a cave to get some bombs. Okay, well here's one right here. There we go, got five bombs. There's a chest down here. Ooh, the armored egglet. Let's try to get some more bombs before I go into the crimson to break the crimson hearts. There are a couple of life crystals down here. Ooh, and a gold chest. What's inside? Shoe spikes. There's another life crystal down here. So this is going to bring me to 160 health. Wait, that's a lot of topaz. Okay. Enough for a hook. 200 health now. Alright, I've got 24 bombs now. That should be enough. Let's get out of here. Let's make the topaz hook first. Just so I can maneuver around more easily. There we go. Ooh, climbing claws. Okay, the crimson is not on the right side. But let's see if I can find any water chests. Okay, there's one, but let's not die to that jellyfish. Okay, I will take that. Wait, that's actually perfect. The superior trident. I can start killing some enemies with this thing now. But I'm still gonna go for the rotted fork regardless. Let's see, with each hit increases our experience. By five. Okay, finally found the crimson. And I just got, wait, the superior spear. Won't be needing that anymore. Okay, let's head down. Hopefully I can get it within two hearts. Okay, first one. The Undertaker. That's not good. Second one. Perfect. The Zealous Rotted Fork. So this has two more melee damage compared to the trident. And attacking with this weapon looks like this. And there is that shockwave right there for that extra reach. All right, let's get out of here and head into the underground desert. My rotted fork is almost at level one. So when it levels up, let's see what changes. Okay, after killing this, it should be at level one. Yep, there we go. So I gained 2 melee damage and 1% critical strike chance. Oh, it has a chance to double hit too. Okay, I see a chest down here. Come on, give me the storm spear. Snake charmer's flute. I guess I can use this to find some sky islands. Here's another chest. The ancient chisel. Oh my god. With this ancient chisel, my mining speed is so fast now. Ooh, let's go. The Dune Rider Boots. Come on, I just need the Storm Spear now. Magic Conch. Come on, let this be the one. No. Oh my god, I thought that was it. Okay, well I found a Ruby. Which means I will be able to summon the King Slime later on. And that boss is going to give a decent amount of experience. Okay, surely this chest has to have the Storm Spear. Come on, come on. Oh my god. I've opened six sandstone chests and no Storm Spear to be found. Okay, here's another one. Oh my no way! Oh, how unlucky am I right now? Alright, before I go back down, 
Let's store some of my stuff away because my inventory is completely full. Okay, inventory is somewhat cleaned out. Let's go head back down. Okay, and we're back. Come on. Another thunder zapper? What is going on? I mean, I did get these suspicious looking eyes, so it's not all that bad. But still. And another one. Oh my god. Really? I finally find it, and I get broken on it. That is so sad. Please tell me there's another one in here. No! Okay, found Feral Claws. But I'm gonna die. Found the Band of Regeneration. <gasps> yes! Let's go! Thank god I found a normal one. Oh yeah. I can officially say goodbye to the Rotted Fork now. Okay, let's finally leave this place. I've been down here for way too long. Let's extract all of our desert fossils. All done. I've managed to mine a whole bunch of platinum. So, let's craft the platinum pickaxe. As well as the full platinum armor set. Beautiful. 26 defense. I have pretty decent armor and accessories now with 300 health, so I should be good to take on the Eye of Cthulhu. Before I summon it, let's check out our Storm Spear just to keep track of the stats. 14 melee damage and 4% critical strike chance. And we'll check after I'm done. Here we go. Okay. Second phase. A thousand more health. I should probably heal up just to be safe. There we go. So from defeating the Eye of Cthulhu, my Storm Spear is now at level 1. So I gained 2 melee damage and 1% critical strike chance, just like with the Rotted Fork. Let's build some NPC houses now, and try to get the merchant in so I can purchase the piggy bank to store my gold away. Because right now I have a platinum coin and I don't want to lose that. I'll put it inside the chest just as a temporary storage. Also my Storm Spare now has a chance to shoot out 2 lightning bolts. Let's drink a Gravitation Potion, and search for some Sky Islands. Ooh! Fledgling Wings and the Lucky Horseshoe! All that's left is the Shiny Red Balloon. And there it is. I'm gonna collect some more Platinum Ore now, so that I can craft some Platinum Crowns to summon the King Slime. Ooh, that's a lot of Platinum here. Okay, I've got 100 Platinum Ore and 9 Platinum Bars now. Before I go back up to craft the slime crowns, I'm going to collect two more life crystals for max health. There's one. And down there should be the last. Perfect. Max health. Okay, six platinum crowns made. I just need two more gel to be able to craft one slime crown. I also managed to mine 27 emeralds. So let's upgrade our topaz hook to the emerald hook. Okay, got 20 gel now, slime crown made, and let's just summon it. So our storm spear is at level 2 at the moment, with 18 melee damage and 6% critical strike chance. Okay, it's at 50% health now. Oh god, that's fast. And you're done. Let's clean up the rest. The Storm Spare is now at level 3. So it's safe to say that each King Slime defeated increases the Storm Spare by a whole level. Let's go summon some more. I can craft 3 now. That's 1. Now it's at level 4. That's 2. Okay, never mind. It's almost at level 5. 
And that's the third one. There we go, level 5. It now has 24 melee damage and 9 critical strike chance. I can summon the King Slime two more times, so let's go do it. That's one, and that's two. It's at level six. So it's now able to shoot two projectiles 100% of the time, and sometimes three. Let's sell all of these items now. We're almost at two platinum coins. All right, it's about time I take on the Brain of Cthulhu. And I don't think I'll need to make an arena for this fight. Just because I have fledgling wings and a really good hook now. So it'll be pretty easy to maneuver around. Alright, here we go. Killing the creepers pretty fast. Almost second phase. There we go. Wow, that is a lot of damage. Oh my god. Alright, Brain of Cthulhu has been defeated. I might as well summon it one more time. Okay, that is so much faster. Oh my god. Now that I have some Crimtain bars and tissue samples, I'm going to craft the Deathbringer pickaxe, as well as the full Crimson armor. Beautiful. And each piece increases my damage by 3%, so my Storm Spear now has 30 melee damage. And it's at level 7 from the Brain of Cthulhu. Oh yeah, you can definitely notice the size difference now. Let's head over to the dungeon now to build an arena for Skeltron. There we go. A 2 leveled arena should be enough. All that's left to do is to wait until nighttime. It is finally nighttime. Let's talk to the old man to summon the boss. Three. Two, one. Hands first. That's one. And that's two. Just the head now. Yeah, I'm dealing a lot of damage right now. Oh my god. There we go, Skeletron has been defeated. Now that I have access into the dungeon, there are only two items that I'm looking for. The Cobalt Shield, of course, and the Shadow Key. With the Shadow Key, I'll be able to get my hands on the Dark Lance. Okay, there's the Cobalt Shield, and it has armored on it. And there's the Shadow Key. Let's mine down to Hell now, so that I can open up some Shadow Chests. Finally made it down to Hell. And there are two shadow chests on the right here. Wait, there's three. Oh my god. Okay. Pretty good chance that I'll be able to get the Dark Lance. First one. Flame Lash. Second one. Hellwing Bow. And for the third one. No. The Flower of Fire. Okay. Traveling Merchant has arrived. Oh, he's selling the DPS meter. I will buy that. Okay, there's the Dark Lance. 38 melee damage. I'm gonna hold on to the Storm Spear for now, just because it can shoot projectiles. But if the Dark Lance ends up being stronger, then I'll get rid of it. Let's also mine some Hellstone, so that I can craft the Molten Pickaxe and Molten Armor later on. Okay, that should be enough Hellstone. 346. And that is enough Obsidian. Now I can craft the Molten Pickaxe and the full Molten Armor sets. There we go. And the set bonus gives us an additional 10% melee damage. I do have three suspicious looking eyes, so I'm going to use them to level up the Dark Lance. And there goes the last one. So three Eye of Cthulhu's has brought my Dark Lance to level two. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough to take on the Wild Flesh. I see that there are enough Crimson Hearts to summon the Brain of Cthulhu one more time. So I think I'm going to do that. All done. Oh wait, no, there's actually more here. I guess I am summoning the boss again. Alright. 
My Dark Lance is now at level 3. Oh, wait. The Goblin Army has arrived? I guess I'm blind. I didn't see that the Goblin Armies were invading. Let's go take care of them, and then I will search for the Goblin Tinkerer. This event should also bring my Dark Lance to at least level 5. Okay, Goblin Army has been defeated. So from level 3 to level 5. Just like I said. Let's drink a Hunter's Potion and search for the Goblin Tinkerer now. Oh my god, there he is. Wait, that was so fast. Let's purchase the Rocket Boots and the Workshop. And I'm also going to reforge my weapons. Let's try to get Godly. There we go. Same with the Storm Spear. Perfect. So my Dark Lance now has 57 melee damage, 25% critical strike chance. And my Storm Spear has 37 melee damage with 28% critical strike chance. Let's combine the Rocket Boots and Dune Rider Boots to make Spectre Boots for now. And then I'm going to go into the jungle to search for the Anklet of the Wind, as well as the Cloud in a Bottle. Oh, here's the Sharpening Station. That's going to increase our damage by a bit more. Okay, found the Anklet of the Wind. Now I just need the Cloud in a Bottle. Oh, there it is. Okay, now I can craft the Lightning Boots and the Blue Horseshoe Balloon. I got some crazy mobility now. Let's summon these three Eye of Cthulhu's, and then I'll be ready to take on the Wall of Flesh. All done. Alright, made it to the end of the world. My Dark Lance is at level 7, so it's pretty strong now. I should have no problems at all. Let's drink my potions. And let's toss in the Voodoo Doll. 3, 2, 1. Let's go. Clear out the hungries. All right. Oh my god, I'm feeling almost 2,000 damage per second. Holy crap. Wait, I was attacking all three parts at the same time. That was a lot of damage. Okay, let's open up our treasure bag. Oh my god, really? Two magic items. Okay, with the Pwn Hammer, let's go back to the Crimson and break some Crimson Altars to spawn in the hard mode ores. We've got Cobalt, Orichalcum, and Titanium. Oh my god! Wait! My Dark Lance can hit three times with just one swing. Damn, that is strong. That's enough Cobalt. Onto the Orichalcum. That's enough Orichalcum. And finally, let's go mine the Titanium. And that's enough Titanium. Let's craft the full Titanium Armor Set. So from 39 defense all the way to 63. Now, I thought about crafting the Titanium Trident. Yes, it does have a higher base damage compared to the Dark Lance, but it doesn't have any special effects, so it's really not worth the time leveling up. Which means I will be sticking with the Dark Lance until I defeat the Mechanical Bosses. Speaking of the Mechanical Bosses, let's go farm enough materials to craft the summons. Oh my god. I just got the Rod of Discord. Wait a minute. Welp, that just made up the unluckiness that I had during the early game of trying to find the Storm Spear. Okay, I think I collected too many Souls of Light. 41 is more than enough. And that is enough Souls of Night. Alright, now I can make all three mechanical boss summons. There we go. And because there's still some time left before night, I'm going to go kill some wyverns for souls of flight to craft better wings. Okay, that's enough souls of flight. Now I can craft angel wings. Let's wait until nighttime to summon the mechanical bosses. It is finally nighttime. So the first mechanical boss that I'll be taking on is going to be the destroyer. 
Before I summon it though, let's take a look at the Dark Lance. It's at level 12 with 79 melee damage and a whopping 43% critical strike chance. All right, let's begin. Three, two, one. Go to the clumped up parts and start attacking. Oh my, 20,000 damage. Oh, I am shredding this boss. And just like that, the destroyer has been defeated. So just from killing the destroyer, it has brought my Dark Lands to level 14. Almost level 15. Okay, now that was insane. Next up, the twins. Not sure if my Dark Lands can reach though. Yeah, no. It's going to have to dash to me before I can deal damage. Like that. Oh yeah. Almost second phase. There we go. Okay, let's back out. Oh, that curse flame almost touched me. Second phase for both now. Okay, Spasm is down. And so is the Retinazer. The Dark Lands is at level 16. Lastly, Skeletron Prime. And for this boss, I'll be taking out all four of its arms first before I hit the head. Okay, Prime Laser's down. Prime Vice. Saw's down, and just the cannon left. There we go. That was just to gain as much experience as possible. A few more hits. All done. So those three mechanical bosses has brought my Dark Lance to level 17. With 90 melee damage and 48% critical strike chance. To be honest, I should have just crafted the Gungnir, after I defeated the Destroyer. Yeah, that would have been a lot better. But that's okay. Let's craft it right now. And we're going to reforge it. Oh my god. First try. With all three souls from the mechanical bosses, I'm going to craft the Pickaxe Axe. And then I'll be heading towards the dungeon to find the Plantera Bulb, as well as to mine some Chlorify Ore. Oh my god, wait. There's the Plantera Bulb. I'll be making the arena right here then. And I did manage to mine 143 Chlorify Ore. So let's go back home. And with it, I'm going to craft the Chlorophyte Partisan. Let's reforge it to Godly. There we go. And I think I might as well just get rid of the Gungnir, even though I just crafted it. Because with the Chlorophyte Partisan, I'm able to shoot out poison clouds that can pass through blocks to hit enemies. Okay, the arena is all complete. It's a bit on the smaller side, but I think it'll do. Let's break the Plantera Bulb now. Three, two, one. Let's go. Wait. Huh? Oh my god, this thing is crazy. What is this weapon? Wait, what was that damage? Oh my god. I think it's because of the poison clouds that linger in the area for a while. Okay, let's actually test it out on this target dummy. Three, two, one. Oh my god. Yep. It was because of the poison clouds. Jesus, that sound. Oh my, look at my damage per second. Wait, how high can it go up to? Uh, about 25,000 damage per second. And no, attacking this dummy does not gain me any experience at all, if you guys were wondering. 
Okay, but let's get a little bit closer and just attack with the spear itself. Yeah, okay. It's definitely those poison clouds. With the temple key, let's go take on Golem. Okay, made it into the boss room. It's pretty wide. Let's clear out all of the traps first. And let's just summon the boss because I really don't have to build an arena because of this Chlorophyte Partisan. Three, two, one. Yeah, look at that. Oh my god. Oh, I'm just blowing up bosses now. What? From just one golem, it has gained me three levels. And I can summon it three more times. Let's actually save these though, because there's really no need to level this thing up any further. I will instead be getting my hands on another spear from the Old One's army, which is the Ghastly Glaive. To summon the Old One's army, I'm first going to have to flatten this area a bit. Then let's put this Eternia crystal stand right in the middle. And finally, I'll be inserting this crystal to summon the Old One's army. Three, two, one. And I should have no problems. Especially with this weapon. Yeah, they just get destroyed in an instant. And this spear is so goddamn big, considering it's only at level 13. Okay, here's Betsy, and dead. Oh my god. Yeah, no ghastly glaive this time, but we'll try again. God damn, my partisan is at level 23. I forgot to mention that the Ghastly Glaive can only drop from Ogres. Yeah, not this time either. Guess I'm gonna have to go for a third try then. Before I start up the Old One's Army the third time, I do have 277 Defender Medals. So, it's about time I replace my Titanium Armor. And the armor set that I'll be picking is going to be the Valhalla's Knight. 84 defense now. I do lose out on 6 melee damage, but the defense definitely makes up for it. And also the massively increased life regeneration. Okay, my Chlorophyte Partisan is officially level 30, and um, yeah, it's a bit ridiculous now. The size of the spear, the clouds, and the number of clouds too? Oh my god. A single poison cloud is bigger than me. Boom of infinite wisdom. Not what I'm looking for. Brand of the Inferno. Nope. Okay, well. Maybe I have to do it the fourth time. You know what? Instead of summoning the Old One's army for the fourth time, I'm going to try my luck and try to find the Shimmer Pool. With the Shimmer Pool, I can toss in these weapons to cycle through to the Ghastly Glaive. <gasps> oh my god, is this it? <gasps> it is! Oh my god, that took forever. Okay, let's drop in the Brand of the Inferno. Turns into the Sleepy Octopod. And then, the Sleepy Octopod turns into the Ghastly Glaive. Beautiful! Oh yeah. Technically, I could have used the Chlorophyte Partisan throughout the entire game, but that would have been extremely boring. So it's finally time to say goodbye to it. Let's reforge this weapon. There we go. And let's go back to the temple to summon the rest of the golems. Finally made it back. And let's just summon it right away. Oh yeah, okay. 3,000 damage per second. Not bad. Oh, it's getting higher. 9,000 damage per second. Oh my god. It just gained 6 levels. From just one golem. Second one, here we go. Oh! Wait, this is so much stronger now. 
Wow. Level 9. One more time. <laughs> Wait, it went up to 30,000 damage. Oh my god, this weapon's nasty. Let's test it out on this dummy. Okay. It's about par with the Chlorophyte Partisan when that weapon was around this level, around level 12. Let's go to the dungeon to take on the Lunatic Cultist now. Here we go. I wonder if I can just stand still. Oh, for sure. Oh my god. That was insanely fast. I'm not going to destroy these Celestial Pillars just yet. There's just one more spear that I want to get, and it's only obtainable from the Frost Moon event. So, I'll be using the Naughty Present when it turns to night. It has turned to night, so let's use the Naughty Present. Okay, I'm finally on the wave where Ice Queen spawn, and those mobs are the ones that drop the North Pole Spear. There it is! Oh my god, wait, hold up. The size of these ghosts are huge. Oh my god, it's a level 21. Okay, let's switch over. North pull time. It's gonna take a bit to level up, but it'll get there. Okay, this thing is at level 5, and it's already looking pretty good. The amount of snow is racking up. Okay, the Frost Moon has ended. And that's going to bring the North Pole to level 23. And let's get godly on this thing. Perfect. So it now has 151 melee damage and 56% critical strike chance. Here's what it looks like. Wait for it. Oh yeah. That's a lot of snowflakes. <laughs> oh my god. Now it's time for the Celestial Pillars. Vortex Pillar is done. Now that I'm thinking about it, this weapon is probably not the best for when I fight Moonlord, since it completely blocks my screen with all the projectiles, and it doesn't help that these projectiles have a very similar color tone to Moonlord's attacks. Nebula Pillar is down. There goes the Stardust Pillar. Just the Solar Pillar now. And there goes the last pillar. Okay, let's start attacking. Here we go. Oh yeah. I know that this weapon isn't as strong as the Chlorophyte Partisan, or even the Ghastly Glaive, but it sure is hella cool. Are both hands down? Oh no, just one. Okay, both hands are down. Let's make use of my Rod of Discord. Perfect. Okay, I have to hit kind of ahead of me so that the snowflakes can reach. Just the core now. Ooh, I took big damage there. DP! Oh god! I'm very low right now. One shot will take me out. <gasps> oh my god. Thank god for that brain of confusion. Ow. Teleport again. Come on. And you're dead. Oh. That was way too close. Alright, that's going to be it guys. Thank you all for watching. If you want to try this mod out for yourselves, I'll list all the mods I've used in the description below. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment below if you have any other mod or video ideas you want me to try out, and of course subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Peace!